Hello and welcome to this video on olive trees as a species for bonsai. The olive tree can be a somewhat ubiquitous tree, especially in European, American and Australian bonsai displays. It is especially common in those countries that have ready access to Mediterranean resources, primarily people with that heritage. It is a very stunning tree when well done, incredibly forgiving of mistakes, and easily sourced. Again, especially for those people who come from areas that have a strong background of Greek and Italian people. As a bonsai, the tree is cultivated in a variety of different ways. The primary reason for this is that it ratios extremely well. That is, it has tiny leaves, a short space between nodes, and can often be dug out from the ground as a yamadori. Many old olive plantations are being turned over and replaced on a regular basis. This means getting stock can be quite easy and often free. The nature of these trees and their age when done that way means you often get access to a great deal of deadwood for gin and shari. The bar creates a stunning patina and it ages extremely well. Then you need to consider that as a bonsai, the olive is incredibly hardy and requires very little care, but with even the smallest amount of effort, you can achieve exceptional results. As a naturally occurring tree, olives are some of the world's oldest cultivated trees you can find. They go back to ancient Greece. At least one obvious reason for this is just how difficult they are to kill, and that's something to bear in mind. In plantations and similar, Trees are often not killed, but dug out and destroyed. In the wild, the olive tree can grow 7 to 10 metres tall. They are an evergreen in most cases, with the rare exception being when they are exposed to extreme cold and frost. They will spread just as wide as they grow tall. This means you get quite a wide and high tree. The leaves are long, narrow, and somewhere between a silver and green colour. The obvious comparison here is with the olive drab or military green. The trunk itself will often be gnarled and twisted. In other cases, if the tree has been treated with exceptional care, it may be a smooth silvery grey colour. In many cases you can find ornamental olives grown instead of a fruiting variety. These are not the same at all by comparison to what you'll find in an olive plantation. The leaves of the ornamental variety are darker. They also have a slightly different silvery grey appearance on their trunk. Unlike the fruiting variety, ornamental olives will develop tiny pea-sized fruit. These rather obviously have no particular value. The advantage to this is that they are often purchased under the misconception that they will produce fruit. If you are attempting to get bonsai stock, finding someone who has mistakenly purchased an ornamental variety is a good way to get something either for free or at very little cost. The olive tree, when grown for its fruit, survives well in many different temperatures. It also doesn't require as much water or nutrition. This means at implantation, it's used in a very rough situation and still continues to produce. With any good olive, the more you let it grow without doing anything, the quicker it will grow a thick, twisted and distorted trunk. That's if we're talking about a plantation or fruiting tree. If we're talking about an ornamental variety, you'll find the trunks do not grow especially thick or wide between 5 and 10 centimetres in a good case. In a plantation or fruiting variety, we are looking at an excess of a metre in some cases, and this can lead to bonsai that are incredibly wide and substantial. Bear this in mind if you are thinking of using an olive as a bonsai. You can get anything from something the size of your finger through to the size of a small car. They have exceptional branch ramification and this can be encouraged through pruning that we'll explain shortly. Before pruning your tree, you need to consider how you are going to grow it and in what media. In general, 
The environment and soil in which you would find an olive tree in the Mediterranean is substantially better quality than you might find in any sort of potting mix supply. Bear that in mind, in the Mediterranean they have access to good soil. If you can provide them with as good or better soil, they will grow very well. As a general rule, try not to grow an olive in the tropics. The problem with this is that they are too hot for too long. Olive trees require a period where they go into a sort of dormancy. Generally this is during winter. One advantage to the olive tree is that even if you can't provide the best quality soil for it, the best quality drainage and more, the tree will still manage. What you will lose however is some of the better results. This means better quality soil will give you faster growth, better leaves and so on. But even if you were to use the cheapest, most conveniently available soil, or something you can dig out of your own backyard, you can still achieve results with a bonsai olive. This is the big thing with them, they require an almost minimum of care to get by. This is one reason why some olive trees have survived for over a thousand years. We mentioned that olive trees will get away with very little support, but one thing they do need is water. Like most bonsai, they cannot be overwatered, which is often what kills most people's first bonsai tree. On the other hand, they do need to be watered regularly. Once your tree is established in its pot, you can get away with watering it once a week, and possibly less. You'll need to increase that during the peak of summer, and ensure the soil drains entirely between watering. This will give the tree opportunity to get the oxygen and water it needs in turn. To get the best out of your olive, fertilizers are necessary. You can get away with a standard, balanced fertilizer. Anything generic will do. This means, unlike some other varieties, like pines, you don't need to focus on giving them specific things at specific times of the year. The olive tree will use what it has available. In order to use all that food you're going to give it, and this is very much like with pines, you should prune it regularly. This involves removing suckers and any branches that are low down. This is done during winter. You also want to remove any excessively long stems that have begun to grow. This reduces the distance between nodes. Doing it in winter means you need to seal the wood. Do this with any sort of paste you can find. The advantage to removing branches and similar in winter is you can remove dead branches that have not grown and presented any new growth during that autumn and summer. It also means you can gain any display in the form of fruit from the tree that year. You'll know what's happening because only year-old growth will produce a crop for next year. This means an olive tree that shows no development after a year will have no olives or flowers appearing along those branches. Pruning should be done aggressively, taking it back to only a single pair of leaves or buds. In some cases you may only take it back to a single pair of branches. Like many other species, the olive responds aggressively to this and will put out a lot of growth in the spring. Unlike other species, such as junipers, the olive tree will readily put out new shoots from old growth. This is one advantage to pruning it back aggressively. If you want to encourage ramification and branches further back along existing branches, you need to cut it back aggressively. In some cases, the most healthy of specimens can also be defoliated. This should be done slowly but surely to ensure ramification occurs and that your tree remains at least somewhat healthy and supported. Remember this, the olive will flower in early spring, but you need to wait between three and five years for the tree to begin producing fruit. This means an olive, when planted out into a pot, may not ever produce fruit unless you keep it into the same location and same pot for an extended time. While you're looking at cutting branches back, it's worth keeping in mind how you're going to wire the tree. Only the newer growth, that up to maybe three years old at most, can be wired effectively. Anything else should be changed using guy wires and similar. This is because older branches become stiff and brittle. 
these will naturally break rather than bend. When you are keeping a bonsai olive, you need to consider location. Going back to the primary place where they were developed, the Mediterranean, there's naturally a strong, full amount of light year round. When you are trying to develop as a bonsai, it should be put into direct sunlight for most of the year. In general, you want to try and move it into some sort of shade during summer, but the rest of the year it should be given full light to encourage growth. The big concern you're going to have is whether or not it gets hit by wind. The nature of the tree means it can readily be knocked free of where you've put it, fall to the ground and become damaged. If when grown on the ground, wind may blow it over. And this means putting it into a protected location is good. The olive will need full sun, and this will help in reducing leaf size as well. Something we've mentioned previously is more leaves are put out of smaller size when you remove them in an effort to facilitate photosynthesis. Putting the tree in full light will encourage this process. The downside to putting it into full light is you need to be mindful of the temperature. If the temperature gets below 0 degrees centigrade, then you will need to protect your olive tree. Frost can cause damage. The downside to this is you cannot bring it into the house. The nature of the warm environment of a house means the olive will dry out and making it susceptible to a variety of diseases and will slow down its growth. In order to support the growth, you will occasionally need to repot your olive. This should be done in very early spring, before the leaf and flower buds begin to swell. It will occur every two to five years. Sometimes you can get away with longer periods with larger specimens. Smaller specimens may need to be more regularly repotted. When you do this, remove a substantial amount of the root ball, sometimes up to a third, and plant this into a well-draining soil mix. You should try and use a alkaline soil mix if you are trying to cater to the tree's needs exactly. But remember, the olive is resilient or survive anything you can give it. The caveat to potting your olive tree is that it does not develop deep roots. Unlike an oak and similar, which drives their roots deep into the soil seeking water and nutrition, the olive spreads its roots across the surface at a shallow level. This means the olive is prone to drying out in some cases. This is why we mentioned early on, you need to increase watering during summer, but make sure not to let it get so wet or so dry that root rot occurs. Those shallow roots are something you need to bear in mind, as it will ultimately be something that will either kill or make your tree. Ultimately, olives are largely resilient. There are only a handful of pests that are really a concern, and most of these can be dealt with with a simple spray of something like pyrethrum, or if you need to go something stronger, perhaps white oil. In other cases, a variety of fungal diseases may affect your tree, but again, any generic fungicide will solve this. Even if pests and disease go unnoticed, your tree should continue to survive reasonably well. The downside to that is that you won't be able to display it in case you contaminate other trees with whatever has infected it. In summary, the olive tree is very resilient. You can do a lot to it and learn a lot early on by working on an olive. It will bounce back and it will show extremely well for whatever you do to it. It is an example of the more you punish this tree, the better it is. In many places you can obtain olive stock for little to no cost. If you have access to somewhere that formerly had orchards, you may find either saplings or fully developed olives available for little to no cost that have exceptional characteristics and will get you on the way to creating your own bonsai tree of incredible quality very quickly. If you are just beginning out with bonsai, they are a very good option. A great way to learn, a great way to make mistakes, but not take any significant loss for your efforts. If you're looking at getting someone into bonsai, this is perhaps one of the best beginner trees. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.